<laughs> Hello. Welcome to my Facebook Live show called um, in Living in Color. And I am going to wait for one or two more people to join me before I start. Um, I'll do an introduction. My name is Christina Fontanelli, and I am an art therapist and a dance movement therapist and a certified kind of a trauma professional and I has been God has been tugging on my heart. Hello to the two people who are watching. Um, God has been tugging on my heart to share my testimony um, and just share my life experiences and share my journey with him, share just what I'm going through. Although it may feel like I'm going through it by myself, I'm not. And I just feel like there's a lot of fruitful stuff that I can be sharing with others. So um, I would like to start this with just a short prayer um, before we begin to be able to just really cultivate a space for um, the Holy Spirit to use me and flow through me and to make sure that I'm sharing the message that he has for you all tonight. So Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for just your presence. We thank you for all the things that you are able to protect us from that we're not even aware of, God. We thank you that you are consistent, that you are faithful, um, and that you are a healthy father to us, God. I pray that tonight um, this episode will be devoted to you and to magnify you and glorify you in all the ways in my life that you've been able to be present, God, um, in all the ways that you have been able to teach me, to grow me, to expand me, to push me um, as a true father-daughter relationship. I pray for every single person who watches this, whether it's now or later, um, that you will be able to allow this message to be just what they needed and just on time for them. That they will be able to see you through me and um, just that you would just shine, shine and, and use this space as your platform um, to deliver the good word that you have for us tonight. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you um, for the bravery to be able to do this. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. Um, so I thank you that it's fine to hear and that I'm, I'm really, really trying to push through my fears um, and vulnerabilities and things like that. So I thank you. Um, I magnify you, glorify you, and may this be nothing but to your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, y'all. Hi, everyone. Okay, so tonight I want to talk about when God doesn't show up, okay, when it feels like you're going through this alone and it feels like, you know, you have this goal and you do X, Y, and Z and you set everything up to be able to meet that expectation and then you're waiting on God like, okay, God, we for the tag team. I did everything on my end. You're showing up, right? Right? Hello? God, where, where you at? And then he doesn't show up. Um, and so I'm going to share an experience that I went through. I have spent all of 2019 really trying to um, just build up my finances and teach myself, you know, how to be financially literate and how to save and pay off bills and just be responsible. And so, you know, I was waiting for 2020, two weeks ago, I was like, all right, God, I did everything. I paid off this bill. I paid off that bill. My credit score shot all the way up to where I needed it to be. And my goal was to buy a home. I was going to get a two-bedroom condo because um, it's just something that I always desired and something that I always wanted like for myself to be able to say, I bought my own home. And I was tired of my, I was paid $950 for a studio. Okay, a studio in Chicago is not cheap. And I was just like, I'm basically paying $1,000 to these people. And then in a year, I'm going to have nothing to walk away with. And so uh, I give credit to my mentor because she's the one who planted the seed and was like, well, why don't you look into it? Or why don't you, you know, just do the application? And I was just like, me? Little old me? I can't buy a home. Like, that's not what people my age are doing independently by themselves. We, we don't just be like, oh, okay, I'm gonna fill out this application and um, I'm gonna buy myself a home today. No! You know the level of commitment that is? But the idea of having something that I'm pouring into 
something that, you know, I'm not going to have to move again if I don't want to until I choose to. Just having that stability was very, very appealing to be settled, to be grounded. And so I did everything. I did the application, you know, to get pre-approved. And I'm praying up a storm. I'm declaring. I'm believing. I'm thanking him in advance. And I'm just, you know, I did my morning routine and reading the Bible and all the verses were like on point. I'm like, all right, God, this is it. I'm about to get this house. I'm about to move in, you know, in a month, especially because my lease was up this month or it is up this month. And so I was like, you even hooking me up with that smooth transition? You know, the baton pass? No. No. I wasn't approved. And I was confused and I was hurt. And I was like, wait, God, you told me this is what you wanted. Like, this was, this was the next step. Like, you gave me the vision to be able to say, okay, I'm going to buy myself a house. I'm going to be financially responsible and have money saved up. And then I get rejected. At first, it was like in shock. I was like, no, this can't be possible. But my credit score, you know what it was? It's my student loans. <laughs> it is my student loans that is, that is holding me back. Um, my debt to income ratio just doesn't, it doesn't add up. And I was like on a roller coaster. And I had the flu, you know, and I was just like not in the good like space because this was like, I need this. This has to happen. Like there's no other option. And so last week was a rough week. It was a rough week, really just trying to navigate. All right, God, you told me this and you didn't show up. Why would you do that? Why would you, you know, plant the seed? Why would you cultivate the, the opportunity? Why would you open up the door that I thought that I was going through? And then you not, like the door was just shut. And, you know, I'm I'm learning on pushing through rejection because to me, no is not in my vocabulary. It is not a word that exists to me. No means, okay, what other option? But when you're in a position where no really throws off your whole schedule, like I didn't look for another apartment. I didn't look for anyone else to go. I didn't renew my lease because this was supposed to happen in my mind, in my eyes. And so a roller coaster and I just I got real low I got, you know I was sick I had a fever I got really deep and for the first time in my life I yelled at God I mean I yelled at God it started off as a prayer and I was just like God I'm so confused like why is this happening this is this this this, this. And then it just like, like this fire just came from within me and it just like, I felt it rising because I was angry through my prayer because he wanted me to be honest and wanted me to be truthful and I kept pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down. And then my mom had called me right in the midst of me praying and so I'm talking to her and I tell her what's going on and she was like, oh, you just need faith. And like I I remember just like throwing my phone. She's in Colombia right now. We we're FaceTiming. And I put my phone down. And I was like, Dave, I don't have faith. I have no more faith. And she just got quiet. And I was just like, where do you want me to pull this faith from? I did everything I was supposed to do on my end. And he did not show up. I felt like like abandoned. I felt just like thrown to the side. Just like, oh yeah, you're not pre-approved. What do you mean I'm not like, God, you were supposed to. Keyword, you were supposed to. But I thought he was supposed to. Right? And so although I did everything in the earthly realm to be able to get everything aligned, I wasn't in the right mind to be able to say, God, let you your will be done. Let your timing happen. Let your promise be fulfilled. 
not what I want, what I need it, how I need it, when I need it. That's not how that works. God is not a genie. God is not, okay, God, here we go. I need another blessing. And, oh, man, I had this conversation with my brother. Hold on, let me jump back. So I'm going back and forth with my mom, and I don't have faith, and I don't have it where, you know, I'm I'm single, I'm celibate, I gave up drinking, I gave up this. Like, what? How much more of me, God, do you want? I have nothing else to give you. I serve in a church. You know, I go to rehearsals. I do this. I do that. I'm, you know, I'm a therapist. So I'm listening to other people's trauma and their, and their issues. And I'm just like, I'm pouring into people. That's all I do all day, every day. And all I wanted was this one thing in return. And so I get off the phone with my mom. And I just start praying out loud. And I start... I like, I screamed, like I, again, it felt like it was rising, and I was like, why do you have it at all? What else do you want from God? I've given you my whole life. I gave up Miami for you. I moved back and I was obedient. I was a good daughter to my parents. All I asked is for a house, and you can't give me this. And as soon as I hit that frequency level in my voice, I immediately got quiet. And I was like, I just yelled at God. I legit just screamed at God out of my frustration, out of my brokenness, out of my confusion. I yelled at God. You know why? Because he didn't show up. And so I was able to, you know, I, I think my mom had my brother call me. I have an older brother who um, who was the only person on this earth who knows how to calm me down um, when I struggle with my anger issues. And so he called me, you know, we talked about it. And then like, as I'm releasing to him, I'm realizing like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave God everything. I gave God all these parts of me. And he was like, it took me to yell and to scream and for God to pull it out of me because he knew I was feeling it. But I thought it was very disrespectful to be able to be completely honest with God. I can't be that honest. I can only be surface level. I can only, you know, oh, heavenly and this and that and, you know, just that fluff. I was like, all right, are you done? Because I want to know how you feel. I know how you feel, but I want to hear you say it too. And so, you know, I'm talking to my brother and I'm releasing, I'm sharing with him. And man, when I, I was like, I gave him my heart. No, no, no. I gave him my mind. I gave him my soul. I gave him my body. You know, everything, everything God has except my heart. When I said that out loud, I was like, my heart, wait, wait, how can I, God has my heart, I mean, he has to have my heart, his word is in my heart, and I just, you know, really dwelled, and and I reflected, and I journaled, and I realized that all those things that I did to prepare for my home, all those things, I even tithed triple. I try to bargain with God. God, I'm going to give you this $500 as a tithe today because you know what I need coming up next month. I'm over here trying to bargain with him. And it was like, no, you're giving me everything. But I want your heart. God wants your heart. And that's my message for you today. That like you can do all these acts. You can give your time. You can serve. You can give him your money. But that's like... That's all fluff. What God wants is you. He wants your heart. He wants all of you. He can handle you. He made you. He knew what was going to come with you by bringing you into this earth. You are not too much for God. God is so much greater than we think and what we picture him as and what we understand him as. And what he wants is the core of us. I remember in Florida, I had made a painting where, like, it was like this, and, like, I had all colors and life, but behind me was this blackness. And I sat with that painting, and 
I was like, God, there's some part of me that I haven't surrendered to you, but I don't know what it is yet. That was like three years ago. And when I said to my brother, like, I I hadn't given God my heart, that painting came up. I was like, that was the part. You don't know what you need to surrender if you don't know what you need to surrender. Like, how do you surrender something that you don't know you're holding back? Um, and that's really symbolic of how I am as a person and how I'm trying to heal and giving my heart to people because I can have a relationship with you I can talk to you I can text you we can hang out we can do all this you know we kiki and all this every day but you won't have my heart at all you won't even be near my heart I'll just be in like I'm present but you don't have the innermost part of me and I'm learning and I'm asking God to show me how I can surrender that and how I can stop being so cold. And I think a lot of it has to do with just my previous pain and what I've experienced. Um, and just, it's a defense mechanism. I've, I've caged my heart up and secluded it and learned how to live without having to bring my heart alive. And so it's a very dangerous thing. Um, and I think a lot of people... But, I mean, I don't know, you tell me, is anyone else ever experienced, like, being present and having relationships but not giving people their heart? And so I think it's one thing to be able to do that with people here, you know, on earth around me. But, like, when it comes to God, like, you have to be able to give them your heart. That's the core of you. And I think it has a lot to do with trust. Trusting that he's not going to hurt you. Trusting that, you know, he's holding you secure. Trusting that... He has what's best for you in store for you. And, I mean, it's just a matter of releasing. I know I'm a person who really just tries to control and tries to have organization and trying to, you know, if I do this, this is my schedule, this is what I have to do, this is what comes next. And there's parts that I'm trying to control with my relationship with God. And he's like, are you done? And he'll let me, he'll let me make all these plans. He'll let me go and do all these things and make all these things come into alignment. And God will just wait and be like, but are you done? Are you done trying to be me? Are you done trying to control what I have in store for you? I'm looking at my life through like this small little, okay, next and next and next and three months and six months and one year. And he's looking at the large scope. And so although... I am not going to be moving into the house that I thought God had for me. It's deeper, and I know that that means that there's something better for me, and I don't want to just move into any house. I want to be able to move into a house that He has designed for me. Because I believe that the house that I desire, He's already created. Like, He had someone else build it. I won't have to add any money to it. It will be ready for me to go. I believe that. But it's a matter of His timing. It's a matter of when that person decides to release the house or put it on the market and for me to be able to have enough money um, secured to decide to be able to pay for it. Because right now, with my debt to income ratio, you know, my student loan, I'm not, I'm not at a place where I want to be financially yet. And so what if I moved into my house and then I can't pay my mortgage and then I get evicted? Or, you know, that affects my credit score. And so really just... Re learning how to surrender and allowing God to do what he does best, man. And, you know, I, I also know that has a lot to do with us and our expectation of where we think we're supposed to be, given the age that we're at. Like, you know, I'm 29. The younger me was like, I'm going to be engaged, I'm going to be married, I'm going to be, you know, in my house, and I'm going to um, have kids, and just where I thought I was going to be. And all of that was like, shattered I am nowhere where I thought I would be at 14 years old and having to let go one by one my my expectations and really I'm not saying not to have goals but I'm 
I have to go back to the drawing board and bring him into my board. And before I even make an action step saying, God, is this what you want for me? Is this the time? Because once I get the goal from him, then I'll be able to execute whatever goal I have, whatever plan I have. But really bringing him in. And what that means to bring him in is that, God, I am trusting you to see my heart desire. I am trusting you that you're going to lead me down the right path. I am trusting you that you are going to show me what my next steps are. And me not trying to outsmart him. You know how stupid that is? When we try to outsmart God, when we try to to one-up him or get in front of him or ahead of him and try to just like, I got this figured out. How dare we? How dare we do that? And so... Yeah, that's what I just wanted to share, and, and this is what this is going to be every week. Just a moment for me to be open, for me to be honest, for me to be vulnerable, and just to say, like, hey, this is where I'm at in my life. This is what I'm learning in my journey as a Christian. And although I've been a Christian my whole life, I am a first-generation Christian. So there's a lot that I'm learning about God, and there's I feel like there's so many sides that He's revealing to me in every season. And right now, God is my realtor. He's like, no, not yet. You're not you're not ready to go on the market. And then, you know, really being able to tap into my support system, whether that's my family, whether that's my sisters from church, and just being honest with other people and saying, hey, I am pissed at God. I am upset. I am disappointed. I feel abandoned. I feel like he's not seeing me. I feel like, you know, he's not present. And it's like, you know, where is he at? And for them to remind me who he is, how he is, and that he's always going to work everything, all things, for our good. And to really trust that. Because that test of me not getting approved, that's a true test of like, wait, am I really trusting him? Or am I fake trusting him? Because I think I put in the work. Um, and so I leave you encouraged. I leave you with knowing that your relationship with God, if you have one, is going to change. And if you don't have one, I really encourage you to just go on your own journey and ask God, show me who you are. Prove to me, you know, what it is that, that I am on this earth for. You know, if you call on to him, he will answer you whether you're his child or not. We're all his children. But um, just to know that I'm, I've been a Christian my whole life. Um, I was a Christian. He literally, I've been chosen from before I even knew I existed. You know, my parents had me at 42, completely unexpected, not planned. They weren't together, they were just dating. And you know, my dad wanted to have a daughter. And my mom was like, what? Like, no, I'm 42, I'm not doing this all over again. You know, I'm tired. And she got pregnant. And the woman who raised me, my babysitter, um, her name was Elena Diaz, and she was the one, she was a Christian, so she just lived a couple houses down. And so I've been going to church since I was three months old. And I've been through ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. So it doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian, doesn't matter how long you think you know God, doesn't matter what you've done in your life, like really surrender. Surrender and open up to him and say, God, you say you take me, you take us as we are. I don't have to put on this face, this mask, these clothes, these words. He doesn't want all of that. Get rid of your fluff. Get rid of all the things that are just distractions and all the things that are getting in the way because you won't know who you are in this world. You won't know who you are spiritually. You won't know what your purpose is if you don't know who God is. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I have for you. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you. Um, Caduce. Oh, hey. Um, Lanil, Justin, Martel, Terrence, yeah, you've been there, and it is a journey, um, it is, um, Angel, hi, Roxanne, Oh, Roxanne, I'm so happy you're on here, Roxanne is a childhood friend who grew up with me in church, and she lives here, I'm actually in Logan Square at a Starbucks, um, so I'm really happy to see you on here, Roxanne. Girl, you know my life has been nothing but a journey and funny. So, yeah, just Deidre, hello, Katrina, Pedro, my cousin. Hey, hola, como estas, Casey? Um, yeah, so I just want to say thank you and uh, tune in next week.
to learn more about what God is doing in my life and how I'm learning to surrender and I'm not perfect, I'm far from perfect. And even though I'm, you know, I'm a mental health therapist, I can have so much insight for other people. And I just be having the answers. I be having like, this is what you do, this is what you do. And when it comes to my own life, it's different. Um, it's different, it's hard, it's challenging. Doesn't matter what you do, life isn't perfect. And you're not perfect, but God accepts you and he wants you as you are. So that's all I can try to do. So now I gotta figure out how to give God more of my heart and what that looks like because I thought I was doing that forever. So be blessed. I'm gonna close in prayer. Um, and I pray that you all have a good night and that you are safe. So if you don't mind closing your eyes or bowing your head, whatever you feel comfortable with. Father God, I thank you so much for just this opportunity to be able to share about who you are and what you're doing in my life. I thank you for just being a good, good father, um, for being able to lead me and guide me and to know what is best for me, even when I can't understand it, even when I can't see it, even when I'm not capable of being able to surrender to something, but to really trust you um, from the inside out. Um, I got God, I pray for every single person who was watching that they we they would be able to receive bits and pieces of you um, that really just connect with their season in life and what they're going through, God, that they would be able to know that you are good, you are faithful, you are consistent, and that he accepts each and every one of them. I pray that whatever they're struggling with, that you will be able to be present and that you will be able to do what you know is best for them in that moment and that you will be able to hear the cries of your people, of your children, God. Um, I pray that anyone who is experiencing depression or anxiety or just feeling, you know, alone or abandoned, God, I pray that you will be an ever-present help, um, that you will send the Holy Spirit to just afflict them and, and to help them know that they are not alone, God, um, and that they can fight this journey with friends and family, um, even with me, if they want, you know, an accountability partner, just someone to just, like, go back and forth with, God. I pray that you'll be able to just cultivate a space for them to feel safe excuse me, to feel happiness, and that um, let them know that you see them, that you see each and every single one of them, um, all the good, all the bad, and all the things that may be holding them back or things that are causing them to be afraid. I pray that you help them through their own journey. In Jesus' name, I pray and thank you. Amen. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful night. I will follow me on Instagram, Fontanelli Art. Follow me on Twitter, Fontanelli Art. I'm also going to post this on YouTube. Um, so I'm really going to hold myself accountable to do this weekly and try to do it in public spaces so that other people can hear my testimony too. Um, so I'm really excited I was able to do this. I love you. And I will see you next week, Tuesday at 7 p.m. All right. Bye, guys.